Hello, welcome to the Courageous Self-Care Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Marlette. On this show, we dive deep into self-care. We go beyond those bubble baths, chocolate, and wine. We get into where it's uncomfortable and murky and life-changing. <laughs> <laughs> Today, I am thrilled to have my special guest, Michelle Krista Smith. Michelle, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm so glad you're here. So Michelle and I met when we were both on stage at the Fearless Women's Summit, and I was wowed by you, Michelle. Your performance was, I was just hanging on the, is that an expression? Hanging on the edge of my seat? I think it is. <laughs> my seat. <laughs> uh, and right away, I knew that I wanted to have you as a guest, so I'm thrilled that you're here. Awesome. I'm so glad to be here. Like, Thank you for having me. It was a really fun day that that Saturday back in February it was really 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 inspiring to hear all these other women speaking about courage and where that shows up in their lives yeah I I felt the same way I was like oh these are my people yeah, totally. <laughs> so Michelle you have a very interesting background please share a little bit about that with us well I call myself a professional ninja that's what's on my business cards it's a conversation starter for sure. <laughs> I have been working professionally in film and circus for 15 years now. I grew up as an elite level baton twirler and a competitive dancer. So I've been an athlete and a performer my entire life. And yeah, I feel like professional ninja was the best way to sort of encompass all of that into one clear short little blurb because <laughs> people often ask me what I do and I was like, do you have an hour and a half? Yeah. <laughs> I have to tell you, but I have to tell you my entire life story. <laughs> I was just talking like that is what I used to say too. I was just talking about that last night. I ran a public speakers club and it was exactly those words. People used to ask me what I did. I'm like, do you have half an hour? Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. very hard to describe. <laughs> yeah. Especially when you're in the space as as i'm sure you are and the your listeners are where you're really diving into yourself and it's all about evolving and self-development and growing so there's a lot of things about you and like i can't just tell you about yes. my work because i have all this other stuff you want to know like my yeah. whole entire emotional journey because i'll share that with you <laughs> yeah. uh the classic speaker how yeah. long do you have for that yeah, exactly <laughs> Your two minutes okay <laughs> uh, I also grew up in the dance world and was an athlete at the same time, so I, I can identify with that. Awesome. So I love to get our guests on the show to share about their favorite self-care practice. So what would you say yours is? I have, I have a variety. I think self-care has, self-care in my life has, has definitely evolved as I've evolved and I've become much more aware of what serves me. Right now, what I am doing, which I'm really happy about, is I'm doing Pilates. And I did Pilates probably about seven or eight years ago, and I was so strong. Like, it was ridiculous how strong I was and stable. And then I stopped doing it, and for the last year and a half, my body has been like, can you go to Pilates? Go to Pilates. And I've been resisting it, because it is, it is an investment. But it happened in January where a light just switched, and I was like, I'm doing Pilates and it doesn't have anything for me. Training is about, has always been about work, but Pilates has everything to do with just feeding my body the movement that is going to help it and heal it. And, and I'm really, really happy about that. I also journal, I have a journal right here. Um, I journal every day and I've meditated every single day for the last two and a half years. Nice. So those are my, my, I don't even, I don't even, I, I call them non-negotiables. Ah, I use those words too. Yeah, <laughs> where it's just like, these are the things that I have to make time for in my day. And because I know that they're going to serve me along the way. So if that means I have to wake up 15 minutes early to, to meditate or to write, then that's, that's what I have to do. And there's days where I'm working on set on, on movies or TV shows and my call time is like 5.30 a.m. I still find the time on those days to even do a five minute or 10 minute meditation and I bring my journal with me to work. So I, I, I say that those are my, are my go-tos. I'm in the space now where I'm exploring. I'm, I'm finding new ways of adding 
just a little bit of pleasure and joy and playfulness into my life because I'm very serious about my work yeah and, and I'm realizing that there has to be that balance and so there I'm constantly asking myself the question of how can I find that balance where can I take a step back and take a break and what would really really serve me right now mm -hmm. and I think that's especially important when when you're feeling stressed out Yes. Or anxious or overwhelmed, which is kind of the bubble I'm living in right now. And that's really, really cool because that means I'm growing and learning and shifting. And so I was actually asking myself that this morning. I was like, what can I do for myself today that will let me off the hook a little bit? It doesn't necessarily mean not do the work that I have planned for today, but there's definitely space in there to take 10 minutes, to take half an hour and just do something for me, for my heart, for, mm -hmm. for my soul. And I don't know what that is yet today, but I'm, it's, I'm brainstorming. So nice. <laughs> I have a few comments and observations and questions for you that brought up so much awesomeness. Lovely. So, um, what I have noticed about self care and what I love about it is the, about the practices in particular is that it's malleable and what serves you one day might not serve you another day. So I went, I've meditated every day for a long, long time now. And I love how I choose different ways to meditate. So one yeah. day it might be a certain practice, another day it's something else. Yeah. And uh, for months and months, I did the same meditation that I learned from a Hawaiian healing book and I loved it. And then one day I stopped doing it and then I yeah. learned another one. So yeah. I have this agreement as long as I am meditating, it doesn't matter what it looks like or what it, uh, as long as it is, I, I, I have the agreement with myself that I will spend some time in silence every day with myself mm -hmm. so that I connect with mm -hmm. what's greater. And so exactly. I love that you have that kind of philosophy too, where I don't know what it is today, but I am going to do something. Yeah. And sometimes it's taking five minutes in your car yep. just to breathe. And other days I put on like a, a guided meditation and that's fun too. And yeah, it does change a lot. I've also been going to these breathwork ceremonies at a dojo here called Ancient Fire. And that is a whole experience, just breathing. Yeah. We don't breathe. I certainly don't breathe enough. And I focus a lot on it, but like just really getting into that space of getting breath into your body, that energy, that life energy into your body, it makes a huge difference. Huge. I remember a long time ago before breathing was in. <laughs> Before it was hip and cool. Yeah. <laughs> My husband had this book called Breathing. I'm like, that is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. How could you write a whole book about breathing? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know how to breathe? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. then, you know, when you say, I know that, those are the three most dangerous words. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so since then, I've met, read many books about breathing and realized, oh, I know very little about it, even after mm -hmm. having read all these books. Mm -hmm. Or you, as soon as you become aware of it, you, you notice all these moments in your life where you're not yeah. breathing, where you're just tense and that really shallow breath. Oh, and especially as an athlete, I notice that a lot. I notice it a lot in my work and my training when I'm doing choreography, sometimes and performing. I, I mentioned in my speech that I, I grew up with a lot of performance anxiety and a lot of that I realize now as a professional, how I've kind of like worked around it is I wasn't breathing. Mm -hmm. while I was performing. So yeah. I would finish and it would be like, <gasps> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, no wonder I was so anxious. My body's like, can you please do something? <laughs> nope. No, I'm going to hold my breath the entire time. And I notice it now in my training. I was training this morning and I had a moment where I was like, I held my breath that entire time. Cool. <laughs> Noted. Yeah. Noted. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's a girl I danced with who did the same thing, plus she had asthma. So oh whenever she'd go on stage, not a single breath, like for two minutes. <laughs> she'd come off, she'd be like, oh, oh poor thing. <laughs> it sucks. It sucks. It doesn't feel good. No. <laughs> um, so where did you, or how did you get to the point of deciding that certain self-care practices were non-negotiable for you? It's been a, it's been a journey. It's been a process for sure. I had a bit of a, a spiritual awakening about five years ago. I was really, really, really skinny. I was, a, I was like dangerously thin. Mm 
-hmm. by film industry standards, I looked amazing, (laughs) but I was killing myself to be there. And it was really this weird space where people were commenting about how I was finally taking my career seriously. And I'm like, you don't know that I'm starving myself right now and overtraining. Um, yeah. So I had a bit of an awakening. It was actually in a yoga class of all places. Um, we were doing a silent yoga class and the teacher only led by their breath, speaking mm. of breathing. And there was just a moment where all 20 of us in class or so, everyone was breathing at the same time. And it was like I was transported somewhere else wow. for just a really brief moment. And that really opened up a space. And since then, that would have been like five and a half years ago. Since then, I've just been really on this journey of searching, searching for who I am, who and what I am, like in this body and this reality. And I went and walked the Camino de Santiago in Spain, and that was a huge spiritual shift and awakening. And ever since then, I started journaling five years ago. Mm -hmm. So that was my way of starting that process. And I haven't really stopped. There's been like a couple weeks here and there over the past five years where I haven't done it. Um, But then the meditation thing kind of came up as I I sort of like matured into it as I kept this process going of like, I'm searching, I'm uncovering, and I'm really sitting in the things that I'm feeling and who I am and just really starting to accept all of that. And then it became a thing it was just kind of woke up one day and was just like okay I'm gonna meditate and I'm gonna commit to meditating every day for a year and then it became a year and a half and then it became two years and now I'm going on two and a half years nice that's a beautiful story I love that and Mm -hmm. I love how it happened in layers so it's not like okay I'm gonna do all this stuff at once which is not sustainable it's no it's not change can I make right now that I can do yeah yeah. And then once, like you said, you have that space, you can expand into it. Mm-hmm. Okay, now what else can I add? So um, that makes me think of the latest thing that I've added to my life is that I wanted to get outside more. Like I love working on my podcast and I love doing all the stuff and I can um, sometimes go a little overboard in front of the Oh computer. yeah. Oh yeah. I know all about that. <laughs> <laughs> and so I thought, wh- how can I get outside? And uh, so I invited my husband to wake up early with me and go for a walk every morning. And he was not very enthusiastic about my fantastic idea. (laughs) No, I can't imagine, especially in winter. (laughs) Yeah. But I said, let's just do an experiment. Let's do a beta test for 30 days and see how we feel. And so we've been doing it for several weeks now. And I love it. And if he he decides he's not on board anymore, that's okay. I love it. I feel so much more alive by getting outside first thing Mm -hmm. in the morning. And then I feel like, check, I already got that done. So I can focus on work. Yeah. Very nice. I really, I really like that idea. I really love walking. Obviously I walk 800 kilometers across Spain. I really, since I was a kid, I've always gone for walks. And I find that when I'm in a space of um, anxiety, it comes up every now and then, especially when I'm fearing things and I get that feeling the best thing for me to do is just stop what I'm doing and go for a walk Mm. and just I call them adventure walks I don't plan where I'm walking I just start walking until I decide that I'm done walking and then I turn around and come home and and then I sit down and I'm like okay now I'm ready to do something what can I do and I yeah I really enjoy walking but yeah like you said it is a it is a process even with with journaling or meditation, I think where people get stuck is, is they have to sit down and do it for 20 minutes. And that can be really, really scary at mm-hmm. first. But it literally can be, I'm going to take three breaths before I get out of bed. Yeah. Or I'm yeah. going to take three breaths before I get out of my car. Or I'm going to write one sentence in my journal today. Yeah. I am feeling like this. Yeah. That's it. That's all I have to do. Yep. And I notice myself when I get in a space of, um, I, I have a, a tendency to overwork as well. And sometimes I put too much rigidity around the things that I treat as non-negotiable. So I have to write three pages and then it becomes like a chore. And then, so I have to constantly be checking myself. 
at me like, am I doing this because I told myself that I have to and that I should be doing it? Or am I doing this because it's serving me right now? Mm. And you know what? I might get halfway through a page and it'll just be like, I'm just forcing myself. I'm going to stop because I'm not actually doing anything. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to stop. And sometimes I have a meditation where my brain is going five million different ways at once. And okay, I'm just going to take three really good deep breaths and, yeah. and call it. And nice. yeah, and it's, it's, it's having the presence to be checking yourself and it, it's going to be different every single day. You're going to be in a different space every single day. Yeah, that is for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that was yummy. Thank you for sharing all that. Ooh, now uh, let's move into the, your story of courage and Michelle and I had such a great talk about self-care practices that I decided to, I didn't want to cut it short. And so what I decided to do is make it two episodes. So we're going to end that one there. And uh, next time you can hear about her story of courage, which is fantastic, seeing as how she's a stunt woman and a professional ninja. Very interesting. So be sure to tune in next time. If you enjoyed this part one, please go ahead, like, comment, and share it with your friends. You can subscribe to the channel if you're listening on podcast. If you are watching on YouTube, you can become a subscriber to the Courageous Self Care Show or channel, Courageous Self Care Channel. And oh, that threw me off. So <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead and do that. And if you would like to be interviewed as a guest on the show, stretch that comfort zone and share your story of courage, I would love to have you. You can go to christinamarlette.com to apply. And that's Christina with a C-H, Marlette, M-A-R-L-E-T-T. -T. To wrap things up, I will share with you what I share at the end of every show. There is nothing selfish about self-care. It has an energetic ripple that goes from you to everyone around you to actually everyone in the world. And there is nothing selfish about that. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to tune in for part two later this week. I look forward to connecting with you again then. Bye-bye for now.